I, I think I think the only thing that really I would I would say is is a summary of everything is that if somebody's going to recover from from abuse they need to believe that re recovery is possible they need to believe somebody wants to help them and they need to have the experience of that person honoring them respecting them and valuing them enough to let them move at their own pace and gosh i don't i, I hardly dare say this i have over 50, nearly 50 years encountered people who weren't merely in a hurry but who sometimes saw the people they were trying to help as somehow connected to their own unresolved issues. Now, I know this can happen in any form of counseling, and it does happen in any form of counseling, but I also know that there are some people who walk a tightrope where they've said that they were triggered sometimes by the conversations they had with their clients i think i think it would be easy to say well you shouldn't be counseling i think what's more important to say is you need more supervision and you need to get your own counseling and stick with it longer mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes it's very easy to think well i'm i'm the professional now i i shouldn't be needing to be counseled anymore i shouldn't need my own um counselor my own therapist and I, I don't, a, I couldn't think of a wronger thing to say. <laughs> I know, but I, you know, I have encountered people who have told me that they have been triggered by the work that they're doing right. on behalf of other people. And to me, I'm not going to say, well, stop working up, but I am going to say you're, I'm going to say there is a line between a wounded healer and a healing healer. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I and don't know how you can, I, I mean, what we went over even in my classwork, and this was something I was actually pretty aware of before we even did classwork on this, is is it, it, it's damn near impossible to do this kind of work without being involved emotionally and, and traumatically yourself, because this is incredibly difficult stuff to hear about. Yeah. So, well, yeah. I think where I where I'm where I'm focusing here, and I I'm sure I'm sure that somebody somewhere is going to want to push back on this, is that there are some people for whom being a wounded healer means that they haven't done enough work on their own wounds mm -hmm. outside of mm -hmm. their client's time, mm -hmm. and so it's as if they're it's as if they're working together. It's as if they're co auditing. Um, <laughs> co counseling. It's as yes. if they are working on each other rather than the counselor being in a position where they leave their own troubles outside. Right. And they are there for the client. Because if you are in that situation where what your client is saying to you is triggering you, is re stimulating your own trauma, you're not there for them anymore. That's Part right. of you is there for yourself. And. <sighs> I, I'm trying really hard not to say, sound harsh about this because it's too easy for it to happen to anyone. Any one of us can find ourselves in that situation. Oh, but absolutely. I think, I think the burden is on the person who offers themselves to counsel, to be there for someone else. I think the burden is on them to say, I need to make sure that I am working on my own stuff, not using my clients to work on it. And if I'm traumatized by my client, I need to go and see somebody. Yes. I need not just not just a supervisor that is going to say, well, why don't you try doing this with them? Or have you thought about that? But, but my own therapist who is saying, let's talk about why you are traumatized by your client's story. Yeah. And if and if I can't do that, then I need to pass that person on. But I see people who are who are feeling the importance that's 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 what the problem is we we all feel the importance that there are too few people helping too many people yeah too few people and that means the burden is i got to get out there now I, mean, I myself experienced that back in the 70s that you know how do i sort myself out and get out there in time right. i had to go and see somebody i had to spend time with my own people 
fixing me because the last thing I needed to be doing was going into a room and then having somebody say something. And I'm having my insides wrenched out by what they've said because I'm going to feel for them no matter what. Some, some of the stories I hear, I mean, I don't need to tell you. Some of the stories that people tell me of the terrible abuse, it's just emotionally too much if you are also carrying your own unresolved trauma. Exactly. Just too much. It's, it's hard enough doing it with, that, with your trauma healed and healing. And so it, it's that thing of saying to people, take the extra time, get your own counseling, get your own therapy, get yourself in a place where you are no longer triggered by your clients. Then yeah. see people and keep an eye on that. And when you get triggered, go back, get more help. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's, that's an that's important the line point. I would draw a healing healer. A healing healer is a wonderful thing. Yeah. A wounded well, healer you. who's carrying an open wound is not so good. No, they're not. And and I and I get your harsh words on that, or at least you're not you're not being harsh. But I get how it could go in that direction because you're not making a small point. It's an important point, especially for therapists. If you're going to hang out a shingle and be a professional at this, then you got to be a professional at it. I will say that um, I'll I'll go one step further. And not only to counselors, but anybody really in this position, I will say, there can actually be an inversion that occurs at a certain point too. And I speak from personal experience with this. And I guess you know, you experienced this as well in the 70s, where we not only push ourselves very hard and need to keep helping because there's too many of them and too few of us, mm. it actually can invert to a point where you reframe it as a point of pride that you're being a martyr that is a really important point yes i wasn't going to say that <laughs> i will I'm because i've done it <laughs> i will because i've done it and it was a mistake it was a huge mistake you do not owe the world your martyrdom <laughs> okay that's not the way that's not how to help people and and we can reverse that because we can feel stuck we can feel well i can't i don't have the time or the resources or the money or whatever to go get counseling or therapy or help, so I can't, so I won't, so I'm just going to make do, so I'm just going to do the best I can. Mm -hmm. Certainly that thought process and evolution is what led me to, well, I guess I'm just martyring myself now, and aren't I a great person and very heroic for doing that? And no, I wasn't, because you're not, as you might, at the point you made is, is valid and important. When you are in a situation where you're the triggered one and you're relying on this person you're supposed to be helping to get you through it and then yeah. you're not really being present for them and that's and that's that's you know not really what you're there to do in the first place it's not really your mission or your intention and so so we can we can flip that script on ourselves and do ourselves some real harm and i want to uh, please advise people don't do that don't go there you know. And it has another it has another effect that isn't always talked about, and that is that if if somebody goes to a counselor or goes to a therapist and they're telling the god awful things that have happened to them, mm -hmm. the truly awful things that have happened to them, and the therapist starts to fall apart mm -hmm. or starts to become emotional in an uncontrolled way, whatever that might be, because they identify too strongly and they become triggered. That leaves the client with the sense, gosh, what happened to me is so terrible that I can't even share it with anybody because I yes. will hurt them. Yes. And the trouble is that these are the people who are so sensitive to not hurting other people. Yes. Again, yes. we come back to this idea that, you know, I, I say it frequently, the people that I meet in my work are some of the best people on the planet. They are just such kind people. They want to make a difference. They want to make the world a better place. They care about people around them. They don't want to hurt people. They sit in a room with somebody who falls apart or begins to to wobble on them, and they think, "Gosh, what's happened to me is so terrible. I can't tell anybody because I'm hurting them," and they they don't know what to do now. Now they can't get help, right? And that that's that's an, an additional burden they're carrying. When what they need is somebody to be able to say, "I may at times feel a great deal of pain for what you've experienced because I I can't stand that people do this to other people." But I will never buckle under that strain because I'm here for you. Exactly. They need to have that sense that, you know, the firefighter is not going to fall down under their weight as he carries them out of the burning building. 
Right. That's right. Yeah, exactly. A great analogy and great point. Um, okay. Well, that was a little unexpected, but definitely a very important point on this whole thing. So glad you, glad you brought that up. And 